Thank you everyone for joining today. We're super excited to have Gary Henderson with us. So Gary has written recently a phenomenal book. The book is called The Clubhouse Creator. And I, I was really impressed with the way that you wrote it, but also I felt like there was so much optimism in your book in terms of helping people take their strengths and create a living. And in fact, something I just want to quote quickly from the book, and then we're going to jump right into the questions and bring our audience on stage. And here is a really cool quote I thought from Gary's um, book. He said, here's the truth. You can make money doing nearly anything in today's creator economy, and you can create your own revenue streams from multiple sources without being judged against a pre subscribe definition of success. I think in the past, I always thought, oh, a creator, you have to be this big influencer and super popular and have millions of followers on Instagram. So I really enjoyed reading through your book and I've actually seen you put this into practice real time here on Clubhouse, which has been truly amazing. So I know that it works. So Gary, first question for you. Tell us about, at a high level, how can people come on to Clubhouse or other platforms that are startups and start to make money? Thank you, Michelle. And it's such an important question. Coming into it as a startup or really as anyone, it's about finding your voice. It's about getting comfortable talking about your project, your startup, your company, your business. And it's about engaging and interacting with people and getting almost immediate feedback. As a startup, we may go to a trade show or we may go to a conference and we may talk to some people or we may set up a little focus group and talk to some people. That exists every single day on Clubhouse. Every day we have new people we can meet. Every day we have someone new we can talk to and it's a global environment. So if we wanted to meet a group of potential investors from India, that's great. If we wanted to meet a group of our board members that live somewhere else, that's great. And we can do it all right here relatively easily. It's in our pockets, it's available, and we get that instant feedback. And that's the part that I can't talk about enough. Like when you say something and you immediately get to hear back from someone, you immediately get to see the reaction in a room, you immediately get to hear other people's thoughts and insights. It helps you craft the right message for your business. It helps you see what's landing. It helps you see what's moving energy. And speaking of moving energy, there's literally energy here 24 seven. Like you start up a room and there's people 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Clubhouse. I've personally never seen anything like it, Michelle. I know it's truly amazing. We came onto the platform and by we, the folks here on the stage that run Startup Club right after it launched. And, and we've truly been amazed at the type of relationships and quite honestly, the amount of quality knowledge that people share very openly and very kindly on the platform. It's been a really cool thing, especially during the pandemic. So That's how I started. It was like my history. I ran an agency and we did, we kind of topped off about two and a half million dollars helping other influencers and stuff. And what I would do in the way I acquired clients was simple. I would go to a mastermind or a networking event. I would talk to people and help them. And then they would eventually say, would, can you help me more? Can you do something else with, can we do this? Can we do that? And that's what I started doing here in Clubhouse. I went into a club called the How to Run a Million Dollar Business. One of my friends invited me up and people were just coming in and asking questions like, how do I grow my email list? How do I run a Facebook ad? How do I build a funnel? Whatever they were asking. And I would just help. And slowly but surely, as I started to help people, they started to follow. Some of those be people became customers or clients. And it was just helping people. It's just so natural to just talk on Clubhouse and help others. And then the energies just move so freely. So it sounds like a lot of work to some of us. Many of us are in business and writing. Oh my gosh, creating content. It, it sounds very laborious, right? Like you have to t concentrate a lot of time, energy, and really do research. I'm very intrigued with what you did very quickly, Gary, in terms of your book and the classes, uh, the monetization that you did as a creator. Can you give our audience some tips on just how do they get started? 
Yeah, so for me, it was eyes forward. I realized a, a principle very early on in my life that we're going to meet people, and people are at different phases in their life, and people are going to take action at different times. But for me, I just have to keep my eyes forward, and I just have to keep meeting new people every day. So if I meet Michelle and Colin and Rachel and Jeffrey, that's great. I might be really hot with them and we might be talking all the time and then we'll just distance ourselves for a little bit. That doesn't mean that, that we're not friends or that doesn't mean we're not going to work together. That just means that it's not the right moment at the second. So in business, a lot of us, we get bogged down with, oh, I've got a really big opportunity. Let me go over here and work it. I've got another big opportunity. Let me go over here and work it. I did the opposite with Clubhouse. Every day I said, let me go meet new people. Let me go introduce myself to new people. Let me go into a new room that I've never been in before. So it might seem like a lot of work, but if you spend more time focused on growing your audience, growing the people who know about your products, programs, or services, or your company, your startup, spend more time focusing on that, that's what we need. We just need that one next person. And most of us are one or two key customers away from a big tipping point. And we try to chase the customers rather than just going out and growing our audience so big that we attract the customers and they fall in our laps. And that's what I use Clubhouse for. So while it might sound like work, I've found that if you create more content here, you host more conversations, you go in and out of more rooms and meet more people, it's actually much easier than trying to grind and find that next customer, that next client, or that next investor. Great. I'm also looking at your book along the line of what you just said. You talk about a concept of a thousand true fans. So how do you turn a follower, a member into a true fan? And what are the benefits of that? Yeah, that's a, it's an old essay in marketing, a thousand true fans or a thousand people that would buy anything that you put in front of them. They're your, like your super, super supporters. Anything within reason that you put in front of them, they're going to say yes to. And that's all most of us need because there's a ripple effect around that. See, a lot of us, we really only have probably 20 or 30, maybe 40 super fans or true fans. Maybe we have five or 10 people that'll buy just about everything. And then we pick up a couple of other customers when we launch something. But if we could get to 1,000 people, and if every day we try to bring on one new person, if we could get to 1,000 people that would buy what we have to offer, then that creates an army, a big voice of people that are out here supporting us. It takes a big voice of people that are in the community and they're cheering you on and they're cheering on the mission and they're moving along with it. So it's not, let's go get 100,000 or a million or 2 million. It's let's go get 1,000 and that's all you need. And now when you get 1,000, you're going to evolve and grow beyond there. I'm the number top 10 creator coin at Rally and I have about 1,500 supporters. So not many more than 1,000. I did that in a year. My one year anniversary is actually a week from today for my creator coin. So I, I was able to amass 1,500 plus supporters in one year. So if I can do that in one year, I know you can too. So that's the mission behind 1,000. It's a number that's achievable. It's a number that carries a ton of weight. And it's a number that, that we can all reach relatively quickly. I did it in a year. That's phenomenal. Congratulations. So we have some other folks here on the stage. Let's go to Colin for a question for Gary. And then please, folks in the audience, we do want questions from the audience. So please update your bios so that we can get a little bit of a fill who you are. And we'll bring you to the stage when you raise your hand. Gary, nice to hear from you again. You as I well, Colin. You as I well. Won't say, I won't say nice to see you again, but social audio chat is a whole new medium. I think a lot of us have become comfortable with Facebook. We've become comfortable with Twitter and LinkedIn. This is a different type of engagement. So can you talk a little bit about how someone today who has used those other mediums can find their voice on social audio chat? Like, Because it is different. It, it takes a, a different approach. And what are some of the tips you can give people around that? It's a great question, Colin, and I agree with you. It, it is different, but it, to me, it's easier. But I like to talk to people. I like to interact with people, and I like to engage with people. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're delayed communication. So if I send you a message in Facebook Messenger, I have to wait for you to respond. 
And that might be right now, or it might be five minutes, or it could be an hour. And if it's an hour or two hours, I'm not in the same energy or the same mindset. I've shifted. My focus has shifted. Where when we're talking on Clubhouse right now, we're all present in this moment, or you might be listening to a replay, but we're all present in this moment. So when Colin asked me a question, I immediately heard it and could answer it. So that's what Clubhouse gives us in a social audio platform. It gives us an ability to accelerate our speeds of connection because we're talking in real time. We're experiencing life in real time. We're hearing the frustrations or the lens that's on our face right now. If Colin, if you're having a bad day, then your lens is a little different than if you're having the best day you've had in the world, then your lens is a little bit different there. So it's just the experience that I haven't found anything else that could replicate it. Uh, Twitter spaces tries, but the stages are small. It's more of a performance over there. You can only put so many people on stage. It's not an open conversation. You're not putting people in a club. You're not seeing the same people every single day, bouncing in and out of rooms. Clubhouse just, it's like nothing I've ever seen. And where we're headed with these social rooms is going to make it quite masterful because then Colin, you and I could bump into each other once every month or two or three and have a conversation that lasts five or 10 minutes and actually keep an extremely tight relationship, which is very similar to if we happen to land at the same conference once or twice a year and we had a drink together or something like that. That's what they're starting to emulate here is let's brush up against each other on the streets. We're, we're leaving the startup club. We're going to go to the next club, but let's take a pit stop over here and talk about what we just talked about in this room. And when Clubhouse evolves there, which I, I think is coming very soon with this new social room upgrade, then it's gonna take our relationships and our communication to a whole new level. Because right now it's quite performative. People can raise their hands and come up on stage, but there's not a lot of like impromptu drop-ins. There's not a lot of just conversations happening in the hallways. And I think we're gonna to evolve to that point where our rooms are gonna get a little smaller. They're gonna get a little bit more intimate, but we're gonna have a lot more moments where we're just brushing up against each other and saying hi in the hallways and creating those streamlined communications. Yeah, and if I could do a follow-up here, because we deal with a lot of um, corporations that want to sponsor Startup Club. We're 800,000 members strong right now. It's going very well. But when they come on to do these rooms, more often than not, they have these sort of pre-scripted messaging that they try to deliver in conventional, almost one-way medium. And I've tried to talk to them and say, listen, first of all, it's live. Anything can happen. But second of all, it's all about being authentic. Can you talk a little bit to that as well? Yeah, you're not running an ad. You're having a conversation with people. So for me, if, if I was going to sponsor something, I would want to build a relationship and I would want to sponsor a series of conversations with key creators in a club that's going to bring an audience. I would want to sponsor what the club means. You do have to be authentic. It can't be like, oh, this room is brought to you by X because nobody relates there. But when you start to craft conversations around what X does, whatever that company is, you start to create content that will start to attract people. We might look at normal media and we may say, oh, we want to pay this much CPM, this many per thousand impressions or this kind of media reach. But Clubhouse is different. If you got normally, if you would run an ad and you would say, man, if I just got one customer, it would be super successful for me. If you just sponsor a Clubhouse room and there's one person in the room, that could be the one customer because it's that type of environment. So you have to look at the data quite different. But really getting in and spending time in clubhouse rooms, I like to spend time with creators. I'm not running a massive budget. So I've sponsored a lot of creators on the platform though. And I sponsor them quite freely to say, hey, I like the type of content you're creating. Can you work me into your content? And they will, they'll work my book into the content, they'll work my, my crypto into the content. So I think if some of your potential sponsors would look and say, let's sponsor a series about this in the startup club. It would be absolutely massive and there would be a lot of brand loyalty that would be built. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. And actually we are trying to do that. Really appreciate that confirmation and that advice. Because Gary. brands, see the, the brands have a struggle, right? If we think about it, let's just take, I'll take HubSpot for example, because I would imagine that HubSpot would be a pretty good sponsor of the startup club. Would that be accurate? Yes, that would be a good candidate for sure. So I'm a platinum partner with HubSpot. I, I know the company very well, so I'll just speak of them. They have a struggle right now, is how do we play in social audio? They don't know how because they have to have a voice of social audio. They can't be HubSpot. They have to empower people to have a voice. And those people may or may not stay with the company for long. So that's a struggle where if they came in and sponsored some creators that were running inside of the startup club, 
hosting conversations than they could do a three month, a six month, a nine month, a 12 month sponsorship of key creators to curate conversations that are HubSpot specific. So that's a better play than HubSpot trying to come in here and say, I'm going to be HubSpot on the platform. That's tough. But saying, oh, we want to do marketing automation stuff. We want to do CRM rooms. We want to do systems rooms. We want to do these types of rooms in the startup club. Can you help pair us with some great creators that can host great conversations and cultivate a great audience? And we will fund that project as part of the startup club. And I think that's a big win for everyone. Gary, can I ask a question? One of the things I admire about you is that you're all in, right? You're all in on Clubhouse and you have been from day one. And as being all in, you're trying everything. And looking at the topic of today, make money in the creator economy, you've done the rally coin successfully. I see plenty of giraffe towers here in the audience. You've got your giraffe tower. We have a little bit of a competition because we've got a giraffe tower and a board ape here on stage. So you guys can duke it out in NFT land. But you're doing the NFTs. You've written a book. You're doing the rally coin. You're doing everything. Is that what you advise everyone to do? Or do we need to just find the thing that works for us and pursue that? Because you're all in on everything. Yeah, I'm laughing because I, I am. I'm all in on three things. Let me say that. So a lot of us are all in on a lot of things. We have a lot of different products, programs, services, and offers. I just have three. I have a, a coin. I have an NFT. And I have a book. Those are the three things that you can buy for me. And that's it. So... All in, yes, and I know the two things that I'm all in on, like having a, a coin and having an NFT project, those are two big things to be all in on. But that's where I have fun, so my recommendation is find what you have fun creating. Like for me, I have fun creating community. I have fun empowering creators to go in and make their own money. I have fun helping people, and I don't love charging people to do it. So I like what I was able to build, which is, hey, if you hold some Gary coin and you support the community, I'll, I'll take real good care of you and I'll help you out a lot more. Or if you hold a giraffe, I'll do this really cool thing with you. We've done, like we have marketing masterminds. We're bringing the person who runs the virtual events for Tony Robbins. He built the software that Tony Robbins runs all of his virtual events on. They've done over 600,000 registrations at virtual events. And they've done over $400 million in revenue for their clients. And Blue is coming into a marketing mastermind in a week or two here on Clubhouse. And the only way you get to participate in that mastermind is if you have 50 Gary coin. So for me, that's what I love to do. I don't want to charge somebody 100 bucks or $500 or whatever to get on the stage and participate. I want to say, hey, if you want to get access to really cool creators and you want to learn, I'll just give you a pass to do it. Just go grab some Gary coin. So I was able to innovate in a way that's fun. I'm trying to help other creators do this too. I don't like transactional revenue. I don't like pay me $100 and I'll do this or pay me $7 a month and you get access to my membership. I don't like that kind of trade every month. I think people are making a decision every single month in, do I keep paying? And when someone cancels, that's bad. Where with Gary Coin or my giraffes, when you buy one, kind of the goal is to eventually sell it. It's, oh, I bought a giraffe and... Man, I've been in the community forever. I love it. And maybe it's worth a little more than it was when I bought it. Or maybe I'm done and I'm ready to move on and I can sell it. And, and you get the powers to do that. And so do you need to be all in on everything? No. But you have to find what you have fun with. See, I got all out of everything else. I don't charge anybody U.S. dollars anymore. People don't pay me in U.S. dollars. They, they pay me in my cryptocurrencies. They buy giraffe. They buy a book and my publisher pays me. But, but I just got out of charging people. I really leaned into, if we look at someone like a Gary Vee, for example, a couple years ago, he did this really cool PDF or slide share about how to do X amount of pieces of content in a day. And anyone that read that knows there's value in there that was probably worth a couple thousand dollars. He could have charged for and people would have paid it. But he gave it away for how do I give as much away as I can for free and make money on the backside of it? And that's my goal. So that's what I have fun doing. And that's what I do now for you or for anyone else listening. Figure out what your goal is. My goal is to become a household name. My goal is for as many people in the world to own a giraffe. If you're a creator, I want a giraffe in your wallet. If you're a creator, I want Gary Coin in your wallet. Those are my goals. If your goal is to fund your next round, you have a different goal than mine. You need to have a different objective while you're here. If your goal is to grow your email database, that's a different objective than mine. So we all have different objectives and we got to focus on those as well. 
Yeah, I think just to, to, to wrap that up, thank you, Gary, for that answer. And I think that the underlying theme here that's interesting is today you can do all the things you describe. You couldn't have a few years ago. It's like the stars have aligned and the tools now exist and the platforms now exist for you to do all the things you do because the crypto that's behind both the rally coin and the NFTs, the draft towers, enable you and the people who buy into it to be aligned because I'm a holder of Gary coin, full disclosure. But when you do all these cool things with Gary coin, you benefit, but also the holders benefit, not just from the content, but potentially the ability to do more with those coins with you and with other creators. So it's a really interesting time that the stars have aligned to enable someone like you and any other creator who's so inclined to do these kinds of things where you're giving away and still getting. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's so a lot of times you'll see me and if you see me on Clubhouse, I put three giraffe next to each other and it's a really simple equation for me. It's creators helping creators because if I help you and you help me, then we can help a lot of people together. So it is all aligned. Like my community is creators and we're helping each other and we're doing big things together. So 100% it's how do we become aligned? How do we do this, go on this mission together? How do we win together? And how do we build it in a way that we all celebrate the same exact goal? Everyone in our community is happy when Gary Coin performs. Everyone in our community is happy when someone new comes in and grabs a bunch of Gary Coin. Everyone in our community is happy when someone buys a giraffe. And in all honesty, we're also happy when they sell it because that's what they chose to do and they were able to get liquidity. So they were able to get money because they chose to do that. We've had people that bought Gary Coin, like one of our supporters, and he took 20,000 US dollars out and he's buying a new smile. He's one of the top US defense attorneys in the world. He has a new documentary coming out on Netflix. He took his profits from his Gary coin and he put it as a down payment to buy a new smile with his dentist because he wanted new teeth. Like that's awesome to me. We had another supporter that was able to take money out of Gary coin. He put about 1300 in it when I launched it and he was able to go and pay his medical bills in the U S because he didn't have health insurance when he came on a trip here and he ended up in the hospital. Like those are life-changing moments for me. That's what this does. We celebrate both sides of that. So we all celebrate it together. So I think you nailed that perfectly, Jeffrey. That's very cool. Really love how people get the content through the Gary coin, as well as participating the growth, right? The success of Gary coin. That's a very great business model. So we have some very patient folks up here who are waiting to ask a, a couple of questions. So let's start with Eric. Eric, what is your question for Gary? Thanks, Michelle. And Gary, congrats on the book. In it, you talk about the Clubhouse coaching funnel, right? I'm just wondering if you've seen that work with two people or two companies doing it together, right? So we partnered with another organization. We're gonna run a couple of rooms next month in Clubhouse. We have a 90 minute paid workshop we're gonna do later in April. And then we'd certainly love to move to, uh, to a boot camp. So just wondering if there are any nuances or things we need to consider if we did that, let's say with a joint partner. I think that's great, Eric, and thank you um, for that. But I, it's just the data that you have to worry about. So when you form a new partnership, I would just form a new list. And I would figure out what you're going to do with that list and who has the access and the rights to that list, because that's what you're going to acquire. You're going to acquire some customers and some money, and you're going to acquire a database or a list. It's not fair if both of you get access to that because the person who signed up for that didn't necessarily request that unless they did. So that would be the nuance that I would have to worry about when I'm doing it. They're, they're all going into my database and I can do whatever I want to with them. But if you're doing a new partnership, what if you decide, oh, this database would be perfect to go offer this service to, and your partner says, yeah, but it would be perfect to offer that service to, you own the data together now. So you have data privacy laws and stuff like that you have to worry about. So that would be the nuance that I would worry about. But as far as it working, it'll work amazing. What I've seen a lot of people do is one person take the lead and bring in another creator as a co-creator but they pay them. So they say, hey, I'm going to own the data. I'm going to do the heavy lifting, but I'll pay you this percentage or I'll pay you this based on this and I get to use your name and that works quite well as well. Eric, does that help you? Yes, it does. Thanks again. You're very welcome. I can't wait to see what you create. Great advice. Okay, Donovan, what is your question for Gary? 
Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, Gary. I actually just got uh, got Gary Coin based off of our last interaction on Clubhouse, where I shared that my hope is to actually help equip the next generation, like the young adults, so that the create content I'm creating and the community I'm creating is designed to help them change the world and change it for the better. And so you're like, you've got a gold mine on that. And so I was like, all right, I'm all in on Gary backing up the idea and loving the idea. And I've seen you on numerous different rooms as well, Gary. So I'm just wondering, picking my few things, I, I definitely have more familiarity with Facebook groups and Facebook and that kind of thing. And I think that would work well for the parents. But I'm starting to see the light a little bit on keeping it as simple as possible as well so that young adults have a way to come in at different levels. So I think just like you have one coin, five, 10, 100. So I'm just wondering where to focus these days. If I'm looking at Generation Z and I'm really looking at the ones that aspire to be the leaders, the difference makers, the ones that are going to solve some of the world's problems that they're inheriting from us. What would you recommend as the top three for me to focus on? As many people as you can reach as possible and monetize at the lowest possible level. The more people pay you, the, the bigger the, the struggle it becomes in, in all capacities, in all honesty. So what you would want to do, if you could, is you would want to get as many people in this example to hold one coin as possible. And then all the people that hold one coin, you would want to get the people that hold one to go get two or three or four or five. The hardest is to get them to have the one. So I would focus on Getting a, I would honestly get a Discord server set up because if you want to play in the Web3 space, you need a Discord server. I would focus on growing your audience of people who know your name. And then I would focus on what can I give that's so huge at the smallest possible level. And by doing, that'll give me all the people that I need to go to level two, level three, or level four. Does that make sense, Donovan? Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, like the, the first level could be as simple as just having a like a regular meeting. Yeah, you like want to give you them so much. Like you want to give it's counterintuitive, but imagine that you have three levels. Take whatever you would give at level three and give it at level one. Because people will go to level two and three anyway. Because they're gonna get fulfilled or they're gonna get served so big at level one. So you wanna way over deliver on your first levels. So you make people so happy that they're so excited that all you need is a little bitty nuance or a little twist of a dial or a little bitty something extra, and they'll just naturally upgrade because that's what they want to do because they're getting served at such a high level at that small investment, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. And so I guess one question that comes way before that is how do you actually build a large enough audience to actually qualify to be eligible to have a coin? Create as much as you can. So... A lot of us think we've got to, we create a little and then we go serve our clients. We actually need to do the opposite. I learned this. I had a client of mine and he was a Broadway musician and he had been in a lot of big things. And I said, how'd you do all this? And he said, Gary, I'm going to tell you the secret. I'm not the best musician. I said, okay, well, I could, I get that. I understand that. He said, while all my friends were playing music, trying to become the best musician so they could get the Broadway gig. I did the opposite. I practiced about 20% of the time and I networked about 80% of the time. And I got every opportunity because of who I knew, because of my audience. Now, when I got the gig, I would go practice like crazy, but I knew I was good enough to get the gig. So many times we think that we need to become the expert. We need to be the best. We need to keep studying our craft. And those are true things, but at a smaller percentage. What we need to do is we need a bigger audience. So we need to focus more of our time and energy, not on becoming better or doing our craft, but at letting people know that we actually do that. And if we spend about 80% of our time focused on growing our audience, 20% of our time on, on actually doing our craft, that's what you would need to do, Donovan, in order to get an audience of that size. That's what I do every day. I don't have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, there's no one-on-one -on -one opportunities for me. I do them in public. I do them in public with my clients. I do them in public in Discord. I do them in public on Clubhouse because it scales intimacy. It lets people get a relationship with me. So I don't have to get a relationship with everyone because I can't. There's no way I have 84,000 followers here. I don't know all my followers. But every day I'm saying, hey, can I get another follower? Can I get another follower? Can I build a relationship with those people? If they want to build a relationship with me, they can. But every day it's just eyes forward. Every day it's who else can I meet? 
How do I spend 80% of my time growing my audience or meeting people and 20% of my time fulfilling? Are you doing that, Donovan, or are you the opposite of that? Not the opposite of that, because I think about the last couple of things I've created, it would be for the use of just the handful of, you know, I've got maybe a couple dozen people that I serve. And anytime I'm making something, it's typically for inside who I'm serving rather than something that I could just drop out there somewhere and say, this is a new template or a new tool I've created. So yeah, I think it's probably the opposite and still maybe honing the craft more than building the audience. I I think for most of us, for most of us, it's the opposite, especially at startup.club. Michelle, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we're all about content, but we don't spend a lot of time building an audience. Interesting. It's very thoughtful there, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. It makes me think you're almost saying like you have to get out of your own way, Gary, right? Like get out of your own little headspace. Just get out there and start making it happen. Yeah, it's what it's quantity, right? You have to produce. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know which piece is going to land. Like we have a top 70,000 blog online. It's digitalmarketing.org. And this month, one of our newest blog posts has had 16,374 visitors. It's how to sell NFT art, a guide to sell NFTs on OpenSea. It was written for the search engines. They have the audience. I wrote a piece of content for them. Our team did, my wife actually. But we wrote a piece of content for them. So it's, I could have written what I wanted to write, but what if it would have only gotten 100 views or 200 views or 300 views? But I actually did the research. I wrote for Google. And this month alone, 16,374 people from organic search have read that article. So we have to get out of our own way and we have to realize what our goals are. Do we just want to create a piece of content or do we want to get a bunch of eyeballs on that piece of content? And we have to serve both of those audiences a little bit. It's great to create, but if nobody knows it, like if you've got the best pizza in the world and you don't let anyone know you've got the best pizza, then how good really is it? Yeah, Gary, it's interesting because that you touched on something that's been a statement a lot of times for building a blog or building an FAQ is anytime you're answering a question, you should ask yourself, well, shouldn't this question just be public, the answer to this question? Because if one person's asking that question, dozens of other may have the same question. So when you're writing email responses to people, should that email actually be a blog post or should that email be a few paragraphs in your company's FAQ so that you don't have to keep writing the same email over and over again or answering the same questions one-on-one? And to your point, Gary, Clubhouse is this unique situation where you really can have your private conversations publicly if you choose to do so and let everyone benefit from those answers. Really interesting stuff. Thank you. Excellent. So let's get to the next question. But first, if you want to be made aware of these very cool guests that come onto Clubhouse and sessions, please go to www.startup.club and join our email list. We'd love to hear from you. You can also send any comments or questions to us at hello at startup.club. So let's go over to Dominique. Dominique, we're dying to hear your question for Gary. Hello. Excellent. Gary, it's great to be in another room with you here on Clubhouse. Phenomenal as usual. Real quick, I do want to say I, I love, I'm a big fan of giving giving honor where honor is due, or as some people say, give people their flowers while they're still alive. And so one of the things that I, I definitely want to just take a quick second out to appreciate about you, Gary, is how you assume responsibility. You assume responsibility. I think that's very different from what a lot of other creators do. And I love when I come into a room and I hear you talking about what can I do? How can I change this? How can I impact this? And so I think that's very big and I think that's huge character wise that you're the type of person that assumes responsibility for changing some things. So with that, when we look at the topic here of making money in the creator economy as creators in the space of Clubhouse, I know that's been something that you've been toying with here on Clubhouse and a couple of the rooms that I was with, uh, that I was in with you. And I was just curious to know, Gary, what would you say maybe are the top three to five metrics that Clubhouse would need to have in place when it comes to breeding creators or paying creators here on Clubhouse? What are some of the things that Clubhouse needs to be looking at 
And the reason why I'm asking this, Gary, is because I think it's going to give good foresight to all the creators in the room. If we can know what to start looking at and how to start playing this game ahead, even if it's ahead of the clubhouse creators themselves, so we can start positioning ourselves, what you were just saying about creating the audience, spending more time on that versus spending time on the actual content itself. What are some of those key metrics that Clubhouse should be looking at when it comes to creating creators and giving them a, a playground to play on, so to speak? So that way we can be looking at it. And thank you, Dominique. Uh, you know, Dominique and I had a, a really cool meeting. Um, I stopped into a room about NFTs one day and popped on stage and was talking and then found out about three fourths of the way through the room that the invited guests didn't make it that day. So I, I filled in for the invited guests and we had a fascinating conversation that took 60 to 90 minutes, but it was wonderful. I don't think Clubhouse is gonna pay creators, not directly. I think what creators need to do is they need to establish their authority on this app on particular topics or subjects. And then I think that club owners, like the startup club owner or big brands will come in and say, we want to work with creators. HubSpot will say, we need a group of creators to cultivate conversations around this. And I think that'll be an opportunity to quote unquote, get paid through Clubhouse. But beyond that, it really goes to establishing your voice and your authority on the topic. And too many people don't do that. They just, they'll go into a room because a room's created and they'll share an opinion about this and they'll go share another opinion about that. But no one actually knows what they truly stand for. So that's what you can do to get ahead is start to build your loyal following, your super fans. And then what I think is going to happen is I think we're probably going to lean heavily into Web3 here on Clubhouse. I think we're probably going to lean into some kind of a social token or a direct creator monetization like they have tipping right now. So if that's the case, then it goes to your voice. Can you carry an audience? Can you bring people in? Can you monetize your audience on platform? And if you can, then I think Clubhouse will give you a doorway to do that. Excellent, Gary. I appreciate that. That's great insight as, as usual. Thank you. Yeah, and I, there's a particular chapter I want to mention. As I was saying earlier, I really enjoyed the format of your book. And one of the reasons for that is how you give very kind of specific tips and advice. And obviously we know you, so we know you've actually done this recently and it worked. I'm curious if you could just briefly run through a couple of these ways that you talk about in the book that people can move to making money as a creator. Gary. Yeah, most definitely. I can give you several ways right now you can make money as a creator. If you can host a room right now, and some of these are in the book and some of these I'm going to share some things that I've learned since I wrote the book. So if you could host a room right now, you could become an affiliate of anything that you wanted to be an affiliate of. And as an affiliate, if you disclose that you're an affiliate and someone clicks the link and purchases, you could make money. For example, you could go to Amazon and you could become an affiliate on Amazon and you could publish the top 10 books that every startup needs to read. You could totally go run a room, the top 10 books that every startup founder needs to read. And all of those links could be affiliate, in, affiliate links and you would make money every time someone paid. Now, if you want to go a little bit more active with that, you could grow your email database. So you could give away a free gift at the top of this room right now. They have the startup.club website. I would put like the Gary.club website. You could put whatever.club website you want up there. And then you could grow your email database. Once you have your email database, that's your audience that you could market to any way you wanted. So then you would be emailing them your products, your programs, and your services. You could run a workshop. So you could give away free content here on Clubhouse, but we're limited. We can't show video. We can't share our screen. We can't show slides. We can't do any of those things. So then we could say, well, I'm going to give you free content here on Clubhouse, but if you would like to come to a workshop, you could pay to get into the workshop or you could sell a membership, right? So you could totally sell a membership here on Clubhouse. John Lee is a big creator on the app and he does that. He's had well over 5,000 people join a $7 a month club called JL.club. So there's a lot of opportunities to just create an audience and then deepen that relationship just a little bit. But that's all it is. It's audience relationship and then they will just start there's energy there's money that will just start flowing right to you great thank you for that all right we're off to our next audience member gabo 
What is your question? For thank you, Michelle. Uh, good morning, everyone. And Gary, thank you. My question is this. We are planning to create an NFT, but all the comments that you have shared around building an audience and uh, focus on creators, I, it's difficult for me to try to merge the idea with the NFT that we are trying to create, which is an NFT backed up with tequila bottles. So we have thought of raising capital through issuing an NFT and then back off our NFT with a bottle and either the user keeps the NFT and its value or receives a bottle. But then all the activities on the roadmap and the audience building activities that I want to include, how would you do like a roadmap for this type of NFT? That's a great question. For me, I would just start building my audience. I would run tequila tastings. I would run rooms talking about tequila. I would go and find other creators here that are creating. If there's a, a creator here that's creating a room about food and you could do a tequila pairing. So I would come in and I would do a tequila pairing with that creator and they're going to cook food and there's a margarita that they're going to drink ahead of time or there's a, a special tequila they're going to put in a special glass and, and let it open up or they're going to age tequila, whatever's going to happen. I would just start growing an audience since you talked about tequila, people who like tequila. And then when you do, they're going to be intrigued enough because you've helped them, you've served them to buy your NFT or the bottle. If that's where I would just start focusing my time right now is I would talk about tequila all day long. I would run rooms as much as I could. I would go out and co-collaborate with people. I don't know, maybe there's a room right now going on Clubhouse that has a happy hour theme and you could sponsor that room. And it could be sponsored by your NFT project or your tequila because of what you do. So you're just aligning yourself with the right creators at that point in time. Does that make sense, Cabo? Yes, definitely. Thanks so much, Gary. Hey, Gary, I, I have a question about engagements. You talk about building um, and connecting with a lot of new uh, followers, members. At startup.club, we, we, we have done a website recently. Just in the last few weeks, we just launched this show as a podcast as well. We have an email list where people can get updates of speakers, sometimes win gifts or prizes from sponsors and whatnot. But what are the other things you can do to boost engagement level with your customers or your club members? So you could really gamify anything. You could run a members only room. So that would encourage people to become a member of your club, which would help grow that. You could run a members only room for the first 15 or 20 minutes. That's something we've been doing that's quite popular here. You open up your members room for the first 15 or 20 minutes, that gets everybody in the door. But beyond that, I really look at people and it depends on your technology that you've built. Now we're building something that's not quite public yet, but it does a bunch of track. It tracks who comes in and out of rooms, it tracks what blog posts they read. It tracks whether they go to the event or they don't go to the event, even if it's a Zoom event. So we're building a, a connection engine to track all of that. But at the end of the day, I don't look at a ton of engagement metrics. I say, if somebody wants to get here, they're gonna find their way here. I focus on how do I get more people to know it exists rather than how do I get the existing audience here? Because I can't control when their kids scream. I can't control if they have a toothache. I can't control when their boss calls them. I can't control any of those other things. But what I can control is I can go find more people to come in my rooms. I can find more people to do these things. So every day I just look for new people. And if I create compelling enough content for that audience, then they keep coming back. Get a Discord server, build a relationship, allowing, I, I don't know if you have this in the startup club, but allowing the members of the startup club to connect with the other members of the startup club because they're on a common mission of startups, I think would be very powerful through a Discord server or something like that. If you, if you I don't know if you've went that path, but if you haven't, I, I might suggest that. No, we haven't. I think those are some really good ideas. And especially this idea of members connecting with members, the app, doesn't make it easy for you necessarily to understand who's in the startup club and, and filter or search for different members. I think we can do a lot more in that area and help out more startups. And I think 
I don't know, Michelle, what are, you, what are your thoughts on how do we improve engagement for startup clubs? Since we can't get Gary's time one-on-one, we might as well just do this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've, if anybody has gone up to our website, we've spent a tremendous amount of energy taking the content that's generated on several of the shows and putting it into different digestible formats. But I definitely think there is an opportunity to bring the club, the members closer together. I don't know exactly how that could be done. I don't know if Discord is the right platform, but I do think it's something that we should look at. I think the challenge that I believe is there is people are transient, right? They're in and out of rooms. So I, I want to pick your brain, like how do we make sure that we're communicating and we're trying to collect email lists? Quite candidly, I think it could grow a lot faster. We're just not quite there yet. Is there any suggestions for us on that, Gary? Like how to really build the email? Like we do alerts, but there's right now we give all the content away on the website because we are really, it's a mission for us to help entrepreneurs. So I'm curious about any thoughts you have on that. Yeah, it's a great question, Michelle. The more specific you become, the better it is. So I'll, I'll give you a, an example. I'm on your website right now and I'm, I'm looking around and I see like you have a best practices for hiring great employees that was published a blog that was published on February 18th, 2022. So if I go look at that blog and it says read time one minute, it's an episode 47, looks pretty nice. What if that blog had a PDF that was attached to this that actually bulleted out the best practices or gave me a checklist that I should look at. So now you could run a room in the startup club on the best practices for hiring great employees. You could put your link at the top to this article. You could invite other people to come in and ask them for their tips on hiring because if you've ever hired before, you either have a, a success story or a fail story. And then now you're driving all your traffic to this one blog post. And when they read the blog post, there's a big call to action there, or you can even put it at the top link of your clubhouse room that says if you want our startup club checklist to make sure that these 10 things are met before you hire an employee, then give us your email and we'll send that right over to you. So the more specific and direct to the content, the better it is. Nobody wants another email. Nobody wants to get on another email list. They want something that serves them. So you have to come up with reasons to serve them. So I would lean into very specific call to actions and that would grow your email list very quickly. Like I did a test the other day. I said, like I was talking and talking and I said, if I put together the top 10 ways to make money on Clubhouse, who would want that? We can actually do that here. We won't bring people up. Are they, I'm gonna turn on the hand raise for just a second, open to everyone. If there was a guide at the top of this room and it was the top 10 ways to make money on Clubhouse, exactly how to do them, just raise your hand if you would click that link and download that guide. Just raise your hand. We won't bring you up, but just raise your hand if you would do that. If you click the link, download that guide, look at all the hands going up. All the people that said that they would do that. See, it's a very specific call to action. It's very specific to this room, right? Make money in the creator economy with Gary Henderson. And if that was the lead magnet, I think we would have probably, looking at this room, we've had 788 people in here. I bet you would have gotten 80 email addresses, maybe 90. Yeah, and when we gave away the books, we could have done that as well. We could have said, if you're interested in, in, in getting one of Gary's books, click the link above, give us your email address, and we'll put you in a lottery to win that book. Is that Would that work as well? Or is that 100%. Is that, like you getting? could have okay. said, I'll give you instant gratification. Yeah. Everyone's going to get this free gift, and three of you are going to win a free book. Okay, yes, I want that, 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 I want that. That's just people want something that helps them. You could have also said, click here, give us your email. We'll send you startup club updates and enter you into a contest. It wouldn't have worked as well. So I guess the best way to explain this is if we were on the streets and we were in New York City in Manhattan and it was Macy's and they were on the street saying, give me your email address and I'll give you $10 off. Give me your email address and I'll give you $10 off. It wouldn't work as well. Now, if we were walking into Macy's on the way in and they said, give me your email address and I'll give you $10 off, it would work a little bit better. But if we were at the cash register and we were getting ready to pay and they said, if you give me your email address, I'll email you your receipt and let you save 10 bucks right now. Would you like to do that? I would almost guarantee they would get like a 90% conversion rate because the people are ready to buy then and they instantly save $10. So it's that instant gratification we have to nail down. Wow. 
this has been a really good session for us. I really thank you, Gary, so much for that advice. It's, and I'm sitting here thinking like, why haven't we done that? I, that's really good advice and I, we really do appreciate it. So do before we wrap this session up, I see people are starting to raise their hand and I think you have questions, but I'm not sure. So if you have a question, I'm going to, I'm sorry, if you're raising your hands, I'm gonna bring a few people on stage and then we're gonna wrap up. I think we might go a few minutes over, Gary, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's perfect, I, I've got time. Okay. All right, so I'm inviting a few more folks up to the stage. If you, got, if you have a question and you're interested at all in making money as a creator, please do come up. This is a rare opportunity um, to talk to Gary, the guy who really does it and has phenomenal advice. Okay, so we have a couple of new folks on the stage. So let's go to Moss Hood. Moss Hood. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Gary. I've really learned a lot uh, in this room tonight. Thank you very much. So my question is, how do you go about collaborating on Clubhouse? Collaborating, collaboration is a big thing now. How can one go about collaborating? Thank you. It's a great question. It is a big thing. Best way I know to collaborate is to build relationships with people slowly. So if you find someone you want to collaborate with, then start going into their rooms, start raising your hand and getting on stages, start showing up in the front row, and then eventually make it a win-win. I'll give you a little secret. Almost everyone on Clubhouse likes to talk, and they like to talk about themselves or what their, their offers are or what their story is. So one of the best ways for an immediate collaboration is offer to interview someone. So if you said, hey, I would like to interview you, now don't offer, you're not always going to get an hour. Hey, I'm running a room about Clubhouse. Could you stop by in this window and, and could you spend maybe 15 minutes? I'll come right to you as soon as you walk in. I want to hear your insights. I'm going to have an audience there. I'm just waiting. I'll, I'll be waiting for you when you walk in and I'll come right to you. That's an easy collaboration for someone, right? When it's, let's schedule this room. Can you send out an email? Can you do this? Can you do that? The more hurdles you create for someone, the harder the collaboration is. So when you're just starting collaborating, just make it easy. Hey, Gary, I'm running a room. Would you like to stop by? Hey, Gary, as soon as you come in the room, I'm going to swing the, the, the mic to you. Hey, Gary, I'm going to do this. And then eventually, before you know it, you become friends and you collaborate a lot. And I'm just using me as an example. I may not be your ideal collaboration partner, but almost everybody would appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. I Great. appreciate it. Great practical advice. Okay, we have next. Vinyesh, what is your question for Gary? Thank you, Michelle. And uh, uh, Gary, I, I have been in some of your rooms and it's amazing that I get to talk to you today. And I'm a cannabis and hemp entrepreneur from uh, India, Bangalore. I want to understand, so in our space of being a hemp and a cannabis company, our main problem in India is to spread awareness and education about this plant and, you know, liberate it and educate the people who, uh, in India. And a lot of people are getting into, into the digital space. And um, I, I want to understand if if you think there could be possible collaborations to spread awareness and education about this amazing plant and how it can help the Himalayan farmers through art and uh, through creators. Uh, and, and if there is a way for a company like us to think about uh, collaborating in like the art space to do education and awareness uh, for our company. Thank you. I have a question for you. What would be your goal? What's a success point for you? Are you getting a customer? Are they buying something? What's success? Our customers are getting uh, uh, educated about cannabis and hemp, and we want to change their perception in India because everybody still thinks hemp is illegal, even though it's legal, and they have a lot of social stigma attached to it. So we, we want to change perception of people through education and awareness and also maybe move them towards having a experience with a hemp or a cannabis product. And do you only operate in India or you do you work globally? So we just uh, actually launched a new logo, a new packaging. I was working alone, but now I got some people who are helping me out. And we are looking to expand globally and be a global brand, definitely. Yeah, so I think you have a great opportunity. One of the, the clubs here on Clubhouse, what are they? They're young. I think the guy's name that runs it is Drusian. Do you know Drusian? Oh, no, get it. Young, wild. Hold on. It's young, wild, and free is the club. 
So young, wild, and free. The person who runs the club, it's D-H-R-U-V-I-N-B-U-S-A. So this particular person, they run a, a very large club with 91,000 members. And it is a group of, honestly, just people from India that hang out and talk. And they usually get about 1,000 people at any given point in time live in their rooms. So if you looked at something like that and you said, oh, I could start hanging out in that room. I could start building relationships with people in that room. Maybe I would sponsor that room. Maybe I would hire some creators in that room and they would go create content for me. I think that would be a, a great solution for you there locally in India that would help you start to find that voice as you're getting your footing to expand out of the, the footprints of India. Thank you so much, Gary. That was really insightful. And I hope to be in more of your rooms and really learn a lot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I'll say this here. Creators want to make money on the app. So if you're a business and you can find a creator and pay them a little bit of money, they're happy to take it. And they will gladly talk about your business. There's a need for creators to make money here. So if you're a brand or a business, start building relationships with creators that you like and offer them some money. Offer them an opportunity to create content on behalf of your business or your brand. Here on app or in all honesty, start to build a package where they're tweeting about you, they're on Instagram, they're on their blog, whatever their assets are, whatever their distribution channels are. As a brand, start building relationships with creators. It's going to be the future of how we monetize. Not only as a creator making money, but it's gonna be the way that brands need to reach people because we're turning into a human to human connection engine and brands aren't very humanized. So you'll need creators to be part of that. That's why companies like HubSpot and LinkedIn are launching podcast networks because they realize the value of having creators inside of their company. Wow, what an incredible show today. Gary, I know I bought the book, your book, it's great. I'm on your email list, it's great. I don't have your Gary coin and I don't have a, a giraffe yet. So I have to do some research on that. But what a great show, really enjoyed it. If you like the show today and you're in the audience and you listen to some of the speakers, you like what they said, please feel free to follow them. Next week, we are going to have another author on, the gentleman who wrote Scale Your Sales, Michael. And he's coming on next week. So if you want to improve your sales for your company, this is one to listen to. Again, you've been listening to the Serial Entrepreneur Club Hour. It is now in podcast. You can pick up the recording of any of the shows that we've done weekly every Friday at 2 o'clock on startup.club. And of course, please sign up to our email list if you want to hear about other great speakers coming on. Thank you, Michelle, for leading us today. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, and thank you, Gary. Thank you all.